In this video, sponsored by Lancaster Insurance, there is a box to unpack, a Haynes manual has been rediscovered, and can we get this engine to run? Yes, um, my, my hair is wet, I've just stepped out of the shower, in fact the um, postman almost caught me in the shower, so that was a close thing. Um, where do we start getting into this? I think along here. Ooh. I'm going to put you in the holder. Right, um, let's see what we've got in here. I'll bring the box down to your level. We have a hose. I'm guessing that's coolant related. We have, oh wow, bonus driver's handbook for the Model 70. Thanks, Adam. And um, some more Fox goodies. Look at that stylish pickup. Interesting, but they didn't seem to fit any badges to these things at all. Very subtle. But that shows you the pickup window that you can get. And I do know someone who's got one of those. So if I wanted to turn the Fox into a pickup, I could. Oh, wait. Thank, thank you for that, Adam. Let's put those safely over there. Ooh. A box of nuts. Thank you, Adam. Um, I'm sure they'll come in useful. Probably the correct size. Um... More hose? Gosh. A brief history, it says, of um, Reliant. Um, yeah, I'll uh, enjoy reading that. I've actually got a few books on Reliant, so um, I've always had a fascination with the company. Some more hose. Aha. That looks useful. That is smaller hose. That'll be fuel hose. Um, various avenues to explore with that but the main thing we have is a flywheel of a slightly different pattern and type so um, that should engage with the starter motor so starter motor being down here big heavy oily thing and we've got this back plate to fit to the engine as well so um, all set fair so there we go, we've got um, an assemblage of items that are hopefully going to help us get this engine running. Uh, Mark, who supplied the engine, very kindly got in touch and reminded me that he's had the rocker assembly off. So I'm going to have to talk that down under this rocker cover and set the valve clearances. I'm just remembering my rule of nine there. That's the best order to do them in. Uh, I must make a correction as well. Despite my assertion that this is a 1970s engine, um, Adam in the Reliant Owners Club seems to think this is a sort of, of um, a 1990s engine. I mean, they didn't change the engine much, so even though it looks like 60s technology, he could well be right there. It's got the inlet manifold off the original Fox engine that was in the Fox, and um, I hope the jetting's going to be all right. I know, I know, I know, but a great many of you want me to kind of strip this engine down and check everything and check the pistons and the bores and you know strip the carburetor and make sure that's all clean that's not going to happen that is not my style it's not what i did with the invercar and it isn't what i'm going to do here i'm very much of the um fire it up and see if it works school of thought and we are at least going to do that before fitting it to the car so we've just got these three nuts and then you sort of bend the lock tabs over um, so I don't need to use Loctite. Um, I do need to talk them up sufficiently, and that's why I'm glad I've got the Haynes manual, because uh, I lost the Haynes manual for quite some time. Uh, managed to find it in a pile of magazines. It's for the Robin and Kitten, but that's pretty much the same as these, so that's all right. And that'll tell me what torque setting to use on these um, flywheel bolts. Well, the back place is off, uh, as planned, and... Um, that bolt has just snapped off. Um, that wasn't planned at all. Um, so that's a bit of a bugger. I guess we won't be finding out what the state of the um, water jacket is in there. Um, oh dear. I think I'm just going to stick to my original plan, which is basically to pour Coca-Cola in there until the engine's full. And um, you know, other brands, are, it's going to be that cheap cola over there. And um, yeah, we'll just call that good enough, I think. Um, do need to still change that core plug at some point. Ah, oh, bugger. 
Hmm. There is that tube through there, which is like a locating dial, which looks like it should go there. Um, might just see if I can get that out, if I can find a decent hammer. Come on, surely I must have a decent hammer somewhere. There we go. I just reason if something's there, maybe it should be there on both sides. On both plates even. There we go, that helps locate that. Because you know alignment fairly important I'm guessing. Now let's just whiz those up like that, first of all. I'm sure there's a torque setting for these as well, but I'm just going to do them pretty bloody tight, I think. Oh, Adam's even pre-fitted the nuts that hold the clutch in place. Uh, we should take those out for safety, because we're not going to be running it with a clutch. A jolly decent sort Adam is. Now I know my channel causes, um, I'll try to give you a better idea of it in the back of my head. I know my channel does cause a lot of upset because it's not the purest form of engineering ever. And um, I don't tend to go for rebuilding stuff if I can help it, but I'm trying to be encouraging to people who just want to have a go. Uh, that's what my channel is about really. I want you to be inspired to have a go and accept that you're not perfect, you're not going to get everything right first time. And uh, with that in mind, I think that's why it's better if you've got a lower skill set not to get into just stripping engines down because the, the more you strip, the more potential trouble there is. So I think it actually makes sense to take a step back and say, well, let, let's just um, have a go and see what's what and assess as you go along. and. Lose ratchets all the time, that's very important. It, it doesn't help not having the right um, sockets. Um, I haven't actually got very many Imperial sockets, but this is a 15mm and it's good enough. Probably won't be good enough for final tightening. Right, it's only 29 pound foot of torque, which isn't a vast amount. Um, I may have to explore different locking options to stop the engine turning, but um, they're 9 16 heads. Oh, there we go. My simple screwdriver seems to work quite well. So this doesn't feel very tight at all, to be honest, but... And this is a low torque engine. There we go, so that's 29 pound foot. And um, unlike last time, I'm gonna take my torque wrench back down to zero, having learned that apparently that's what you're meant to do. I've never had this calibrated, um, because hub nut. There we go. That's the tension taken off the spring inside, and um, that should be good. So now I just need to hammer the... Oh yeah, that's interesting. That doesn't strike me as right, that that plate should move around so much. I wonder if there should be washers under those flywheel bolts. Hmm, I haven't seen any washers. But, um, nonetheless, that doesn't seem satisfactory to me. Okay, this is um, officially annoying. These bolts seem to be too long and seem to be bottoming out in there before the flywheel is tight. Um, I'm a bit perplexed. And looking at the manual, I can see nothing that indicates that there are any washers beneath the... Um, bolts, so there's the flywheel being pushed on, locate it on the dowel, then fit the locking plate and bolts.
So yeah, this is uh, not going to plan. Right, now we have bolts that are actually the right length. That should make life a certain amount easier. Super. And uh, then I'm going to deploy the lock tabs. Um, you should use a new washer, but um, this is hub nut, so we won't. So I'll, I'll batter those into place and then we'll try the starter. Right, in theory, this starter should engage and turn when I apply power. So, um, that's an extra two. If I touch this big screw here. I should say, that's a start. Right, before we go any further, we really must have a look at the rockers. And, um, oh, cork gasket's not looking too bad, so that's good. So here we are. He said the rocker shaft wasn't actually locked down, but it looks fairly locked down to me. Fairly clean in there. Well, a little sludgy perhaps, but not bad. Um, is this going to be the same size again? Yeah, that's all good. So um, the rocker shaft does seem to be attached, which is good. So um, we'll just check the um, valve clearances. Uh, usual story. You got a lock washer there oh yeah look at that so um, we're going to play the rules of nine so when one's open we'll check eight when three's open we'll check six etc etc that's stuff that there to remind me and the gap is 0.15 mil so I'll, I'll get the feeder gauges out and we'll check them right so one is down at the moment so I should check eight Oh gosh, yeah, that's um, well, well, well too loose. And um, unfortunately, I haven't got a ring spanner, which makes this a bit more of a faff. Uh, uh, undo the lock washer. And screw that down until. In fact, I'm going to have to unscrew that lock washer quite a lot because we're going to have to go down quite a lot. too tight. I can just feel that sliding so that's absolutely spot on there. And I've got to try and do it up without moving the um, adjuster. Hopefully that is still yeah just a bit of resistance. So I won't take you through all eight. Um, I'll now get valve three down which is already starting to drop and then I shall do six etc etc. Right, this is um, ignition check then, and um, we shall see whether that works. Uh, try and find a way to get that onto there. Okay, that's not getting a good connection. Ah, oh, now the ignition's fault wire has come off because I haven't actually attached it properly. in a whole lot of ignition there. Seeing some pretty sparks. Oh, I haven't got the coil connected up, that might do it. No, still not getting any spark. We're a couple of days down the line now and um, sadly um, community bus duty and other things mean I haven't been able to get near the car. Um, but here I am, we're coming in today. There are two objectives I would like to get to today. I mean ultimately I want to get it running but the two I would like to get to 
um, immediately are one, I think I would like to rig up an oil pressure test light. Uh, it shouldn't be too difficult. I think that's the oil pressure switch down there. Um, so we'll um, wire 12 volts up, earthing through that. And I think the earth opens up when it hasn't got pressure. And then when it has got pressure, the earth goes, the light goes off. And that's how it works. So we'll just rig up a simple light. Other exciting news is I have a compression tester. I managed to find um, an old one on that there eBay. And uh, I bought it mostly because I like the box, I think. But nonetheless, um, it should do the trick and give us a compression reading. Um, I think we're probably looking for 130 to 150 PSI. I think that's the sort of range we're going to be in. So we'll see what the reality is. Um, we'll do a before and an after, assuming I'll get it to run. Well, here we go. This is looking dangerously professional. We've got the light. My, uh, connected up, so that's an earth wire, ignore that, it's just a bit of wire I had. Uh, so we've got a test bulb, and it's connected to the 12 volts. Uh, we'll also connect the um, starter to the 12 volts. Uh, I've added this Invercar engine mounting, or gearbox mounting, purely to keep the sparks away from the um, starter itself. I was worried I was going to damage that turtle, turtle terminal with all the pretty sparks. So now, hopefully, the only thing that will be sparking is this mount. And we'll see if we get um, oil pressure. I uh, just need to connect up the earth to complete the circuit. There we go. So we know that's good because there's my light. So that's the oil pressure on as if I connected up the um, ignition. So we'll start the engine. Ah. I fear my earth is insufficient. There we go. So that is the oil pressure light. It did go out there. And now the oil's circulating a bit better. It's going out much more quickly. Uh, just change that so you, you can definitely see what's going on. Beautiful. So we, we've got at least what the switch thinks is a sensible amount of oil pressure. That is very encouraging. Uh, and that w seems to be working a treat, keeping the sparks away from the starter motor. Um, so now um, I need to get the ignition system working. Right, the gauge is connected up. Let me see if I can bring you in a bit closer to see that. Ooh. Yeah, now you're completely in my way. Ah! I'm falling over, in fact. Right. Let's give this a whir. See what we get. No compression at all. That's not right. We've got the throttle wide open, so that should all be right. Hmm. That is not encouraging. Right, let's check the next cylinder. Mission on. That looks a lot happier. Look, we're up at 160 there. Uh, well, let's check that first cylinder again. So we are getting no compression on cylinder four. That's a little bit concerning. Nothing there. Definitely feel compression there, so we've got no compression on cylinder four. Uh, I think we'll start by rechecking the valve clearances. Okay, um, we've got one valve one down, so our rule of nine means I should check eight, and um, I can't even get the feeler gauge in. 
so um, that's not good. So we'll, we'll adjust that on. I was if you use a flat bladed screwdriver, I must admit. I'd say that's our position there. I might even risk doing this with the um, rocker cover off because um, uh, then you can watch all the valves going round. Yeah, so let's see if this works. And there's our pressure gauge. We've come up to 30, so that's an improvement. Um, it sounds like my battery's starting to get a bit weak now with all this. Um, so we'll just give that a sec. And we'll just go again. At least you can see all the rockers are working. But um, yeah, we're, we're pushing up on that. So yeah, quite possible we got um, maybe a valve not seating quite correctly there. Um, but um, I think I'm now going to proceed and try and get the engine running and we'll um, see what happens from there. Oh, I've made some ignition improvements. Has that got us a spark yet? Ah! Yes, we have spark. Brilliant. Still got fuel pressure. Excellent. Uh, disconnect the earth again just so everything's dead. Um, fuel system. Oh wow, that's quite exciting. That was actually firing up. Try to smooch more fuel into the carburetor. quite that many revs, let's um, reduce the choke a bit as well. Alright, exciting times continue. Try to build the carburetor up with um, fuel, so let's see what happens. Ho, 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 ho.
say it's beautiful if we're over loud. Gosh, she's a runner and she's running on the fuel in the fuel bowl. So uh, in the float bowl rather, it's float bowl there. It's a bit of spillage because I have actually filled the block with Coca-Cola and when the engine tipped over it fell out the back. Um, quite a bit of torque going on there. I'm quite pleased with that. And um, what I'm going to do now is disconnect the ignition again and um, we'll do the compression check again. Right. Let's see if there's any improvement. Oh yes! There we go, we got 150. Uh, that is very pleasing. So we have our compression again on cylinder four. Uh, brilliant. Hoo -hoo. Just gonna the power again. accidentally choked it with my um, hand but um, yeah let's stop doing that let's just say running engine okay we'll just give you another angle just so we can say we can uh, there we are a bit of choke it again with my hand. Oh, I think we might now actually be out of fuel, but <laughs> oh, she runs. Blinding. I hope you feel that was worth the wait. So there you go, it's a small leap for this man, but it's a massive leap for the Project Fox. We have an engine, the engine works, it sounds fantastic, I've got oil on my face. Brilliant! It's all good. Um, so yeah, there's a few things to go over on the engine, I still need to sort the fuel system out. Um, I have ordered some ignition goodies, I'm missing bits off the distributor, and um, I've decided to go for um, a more modern ignition as well, because doing ignition stuff once the engine's in, pain in the backside. So I've still got some concerns about fuel. Um, I haven't managed to get the fuel pump drawing fuel and I haven't got enough pipe to get it to the carburetor yet. Uh, I think that big pipe I was using, I think that's designed to go from pump to carburetor. So there's still work to be done there. But nonetheless, that is an important step. It just feels like a massive moment. Uh, I now feel confident enough to put that engine in that car and um, that probably won't happen in the next one i think there's going to be more engine shenanigans just um, fine tuning it and fettling it and then we will put it in and then it will all be good we hope anyway thank you very much for watching don't forget to subscribe before you go and i shall see you in a future video hopefully with more noise farewell Pssh.